in our Raspberry Pi uh, series, I guess you'd call it. Um, what we're going to be doing is, um, hopefully hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I got kind of a different microphone. I hope this one isn't as, as buzzy as the other one. I'm still, like I said in my last video, I'm still waiting on getting that, uh, that new one um, uh, that's going to be, it'll be here. Uh, I'll be getting it uh, sometime next month. So what, once that comes in, it'll probably be, the quality will probably be a lot better, but I'm Attempting to make it just a hair better uh, than what the uh, my old headset used to be, so bear with me with this. And um, anyway, let's uh, let's check out what I was going to show you. This is RaspberryPi.org is what this is. Um, this is uh, this is basically where you can find all the images and everything that you need. I'm going to also put links down in the description uh, to a lot of helpful places that you'll be able to go to get your stuff. The easiest um, I see is if up here at the quick start, if you click on that, they give you a quick start guide. If you click on it, they give you this PDF that's kind of a quick start guide of everything you need to know about how to connect it up and everything. I've got a couple other little tips and tricks that uh, we can do for those of you that may not have a spare monitor or even if you have a TV, because I know these things have a RCA port on them. If you don't have a spare TV, um, or if, if you have the TV but then don't have a keyboard and a mouse handy to plug into it uh, to configure it with, there's a, there's, I think there's a trick way. Um, I haven't tried it. I actually had a, uh, a TV that I configured mine on. But what I'm going to do is we'll experiment together, and I'm going to go ahead and try this little trick that um, I've read about how to set up basically an SSH to it. So you can um, uh, put together an IP, put a static IP on it and then um, and then you can SSH to it but first and foremost we need to get a disk image um, if you go over here to downloads uh, this is where they'll have um, a bunch of the different images um, there's this Raspbian or Raspbian which is the wheezy this one is uh, they do it from uh, beginner to more advanced and see that's what it says if you're just starting out this is the image we recommend this is the beginner image, and then as you go, they're basically um, the images get to where you can actually reconfigure the OS itself, and you can change it around for those that are more advanced. Um, I think we'll just start from the top, and we're going to go with uh, the Raspbian or the Wheezy. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to download this, which I've already pre-downloaded, but uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, you also need, uh, for those of you that don't know, let's go back to that quick, quick start guide. It's a good image. Those of you that don't know, it uses an SD card. That's basically going to be your hard drive. So in choosing your SD card, choose one that uh, is uh, uh, got got enough space on it that you're you want to play with. Like I went with the eight gig, and the image takes quite a bit because it actually partitions it. Um, it treats it just like a hard drive and just kind of like a solid state hard drive, and it creates partitions on it and whatnot is what you're going to do and um, it's a little yeah it's it, it takes up a lot of memory uh, creating all those different partitions so you end up with only about with an 8 gig I think I ended up with only about maybe like 56 to 60 megabytes left on it so 8 gig probably might not have been the best choice I probably would, should go with uh, either a 16 or you know even, even larger so it's kind of whatever you guys want to do I think I'll probably uh, get a 16 eventually for uh, this lessons and whatnot. We'll probably play with the uh, 8 gig one, but um, I probably recommend doing at least 16, if, if not more, just because the image is fairly good size once you get it all uh, decompressed and partitioned all out on the drive and everything. So anyway, but that's how um, it works. So what you have to do is you have to kind of manually set up your quote quote hard drive or your SD card you have to manually kind of set that thing up so to do that we you download your image okay and when you download your image you will um, get a folder okay here's basically my folder with all of our stuff in it um, you'll have this 
wheezy, raspin uh, zip that you'll have. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to you extract that. And let's see if I can get it. Yeah, there it is. There we go. Okay, you'll get this IMG. You'll get this this wheezy raspy I I M I M G is what you'll get um, out of there. And so this is the image that you'll be loading onto your SD card. Well, now how do we load it onto our SD card? Well, the question the question answered there is Win32 Disk Imager is what you'll be using. Um, I'll put the link in the description, but you can get it from SourceForge. You just download it and then uh, extract it, uh, and then it'll come as a zip. You extract it and run the exe <coughs> excuse me run the exe and you'll get something that looks like this you have this win32 disk imager now what you do is it should by default choose the disk image um, if it doesn't just choose what <coughs> drive letter uh, windows gives assigns to your sd card um, through your sd card reader or whatever you have i've got a small sd card reader is what i've got then all you got to do is uh, navigate to the image. And to do that, we're going to click on open. We're going to go to our desktop, which is where I've got it. And then we're going to open our, our Wheezy image. Now, this does take a while. So be prepared to sit for a little bit. I'll, the beauty about you know YouTube is that you guys, I have to sit through it all, but you guys will watch it go really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and click right. And of course, it'll tell you this can corrupt a device, blah, blah, blah. Basically, what it's telling you is because it's going to repartition the device and change it around. So if you have anything on your SD card, you definitely don't want to keep it on there. Or you, you, know, you definitely want to back it up or take it off or whatever because it's going to use the whole thing, or at least the majority of it, especially if you have like an 8 gig like I have. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. It's going to begin the write. Um, this takes, like I said, quite, quite a while. Um, I, I don't remember. I didn't time it. I just, you know, started it, left it, and came back to it. But it looks like it's probably going to take at least 10, maybe 15 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. And so um, I'm going to pause, and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, with the speed of, or with the, with the aid of the speed of cameras, we have now successfully written everything. We got the right successful. So it is good to go. So now, okay guys, so now, got it. Uh, we've got, this is what our removal disk J, what it looks like. Now, um, I'm going to give this a try. Um, this is the trick for being able to SSH to this. I think this is how you give it a static IP, is this is what I've read. But what you'll do is this command line TXT, if you see this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy of this. Okay, we're gonna make a copy of this and we're gonna rename it. We're gonna do like .txt .old. So that way, and yes, we wanna change the file name. So that way it won't try to recognize this one. Now, that way we save, we save what we've already got. Now, we're gonna go ahead and open this. Get it over here. And what we want to do is under this, right after this root weight, what we want to do is we want to enter IP equals and then uh, type an IP address, a static IP address that you want for it. Like my network is 192.168.1 and I'm going to give it uh, 30. The IP address of 30. Okay. So right there, that's what you do. And that should assign the IP address of 192.168.130 to your device. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And then this way, and remember that number because that's what you're going to use uh, to be able to SSH to it uh, later. So, at least that's that's the idea, is that's how to do it. Uh, for this video, I don't think I'm going to go this route. Um, if you want to, I'm going to put links in the description of how to do this, um, uh, or at least the, the page that I saw on how to do it. In fact, actually, I'm going to show it to you right now. It was on the Raspberry Pi page if you want to check this out. Um, let's see where's it at. It's right here. This guy, this guy's talking about this. Um, he has a extensive version for beginners and a cut down version for advanced users. If you want to try this, um, I I have not tried this yet myself, but that's basically the uh, basically the idea is you edit this command line text file to add the IP address. For us, we're not going to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that and re rename our other one. 
so that way it's all set back to everything so this is basically what your your drive looks like if you want to try that one I'll put the link in the description but this is what this looks like so now we are prepared so now what I'm going to do is I've got a spare monitor and keyboard and whatnot and I'm going to uh, plug this in and uh, make it work so what you have to do like with the quick start guide is you're going to plug the SD card the SD cards on the bottom of the device you're going to insert your SD card in it and basically power it up now powering there's a bunch of different people asking about powering. I haven't experimented too much with this. Basically, I've just been using just a regular uh, micro USB cable and plugging it into uh, my computer. Or those of you that have lots of Xboxes, if you're wanting to plug this into your TV, let's say if you have an Xbox, in the back of your Xbox, there's a USB port. And that's used for different expansions, like for the, uh, for the wireless uh, dongle that you put on your Xbox that has that USB port, you know, it's back there. Uh, this is a little trick with Xboxes. The USB port is powered all the time, even when the unit is not powered. The USB port has power to it. So that's a little FYI, little trick that you can do is take your micro USB cable, plug it into your Xbox, and then plug it into your Raspberry Pi, and that will power your Raspberry Pi. And then that way you can plug your Raspberry Pi into your TV if you want. If you don't have a monitor and you want to use your TV, and especially since it's got the HDMI port, I have not tried this yet. Um, I, I need to find a spare HDMI cable. I've just used the RCA video just to get something out of it. So, um, but yeah, try the HDMI. Let me know. Let me know with how it looks. If it looks good and what kind of resolutions you guys can get out of it. I'm kind of curious. I haven't played with it yet. But um, but yeah, but that's a little trick you can do is plug it into your Xbox since that port is powered all the time even when the unit is not. So and that'll give you power to this. I haven't tried using like cell phone chargers or something like that. I haven't used that. Um, it looks like they give you a power. Good grief, it's small enough. Looks like yeah, one amp. It's about a five volt one amp. So as long as you have a five volt one amp power supply, it should work just fine. Um, so, it, it, but like I said, I haven't tried any like cell phone chargers or anything like that to be able to, you know, so you can plug this thing into a wall outlet somewhere. Um, I haven't tried that yet. So, anyway, I'm going to, uh, we're going to break and we're going to uh, get the uh, get the screen up here that shows you how uh, how this guy's working. Once I get it all connected, I'll take and do a screen capture of the uh, of the screen of the Raspberry Pi screen. So, be back in a flash. Okay guys, here we are. We've got the Raspberry Pi hooked up. Um, we're going to be showing you how, what to do when uh, for the first time. So I booted it for the first time. I found an old keyboard to plug into this thing, so you have to bear with me. This keyboard kind of sticks. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy to work with. But anyway, here's the first thing you'll see is the setting. This is the Raspberry Pi config. It's kind of like an initial configuration. What you can do is you can set your keyboard input. You can set your time zone. So let's say we set our time zone. So let's click on that. So we hit enter. You press enter. Use arrow key down to it. Press enter. And then I've I've already um, I think gone through and set this, but it's America. Uh, that's what we chose. At least that's where I'm at. And then um, I chose Central Time Zone uh, last time I did this, so it gave me um, Chicago as the time zone to choose, which is fine. So that gives me that. And then I've heard that there's a, uh, let's see, I can't remember where it's at. It might be this memory split thing. There's a way that, no, that's not it. There's a way that you can have it use, you can get basically have it use more memory, uh, more more uh, hard drive space. Expand root partition to fill SD card. You can have it do that. And then root partition has been resized. The file system will now enlarge upon your next reboot. So now the filing system will uh, take up the whole SD card, and then that way um, you get as much memory as you possibly can get on the, you know, for your for your build. And like I said, my, I only chose eight gigs, so it's not real huge, but at least I have some. So once you're done, um, you click finish. And then, would you like to reboot now? Since we did that expansion, it'll ask you if you want to reboot. Otherwise, it'll take you right to a prompt. We do, so why not? Let's go ahead and reboot it. So this will take just a second for it to halt all the processes and reboot. And so at least you guys get to see a boot sequence. You get that little kind of rainbow art in the beginning, and then it boots. And Oh, and also, you will have to log in once you've uh, restarted or whatever for the first time. 
um, it'll give you a login. You'll have to log in and I'll show you that stuff, all the defaults for that. And you can change the login from that same uh, config. So we'll just wait for it to reboot here. Excuse me. And it shouldn't take too long. Um, I'll go ahead and explain the login then while we're waiting. The um, it looks like it's resizing. It says file system is mounted on uh, is online resizing required, and then it says performing an online resize of yeah the dev MCP whatever that is. So it's doing that real quick. It'll update it. There we go. It's done. So um, anyway, the the login will be pi pi. The uh, hell here we go, and the uh, the password is Raspberry is by default. Now like I said you can change that. So we're going to go ahead and type pi raspberry and there we are. Now we're now we're now good. So we're back to a prompt, okay? So that's all good to go. Um, and what we can do is uh, if, uh, if you guys want to see it, I can start an X environment. What you do is you type start X and what this will do is this will start the GUI and so this will start the GUI for you if I hit go it will now load basically the GUI interface here we go pretty cool so anyway so there's the there's how to get to the GUI interface um, it should be D it should be by default have DHCP, so you should have internet and uh, and everything. So you should be good to go. And so that should yeah that should have you good. So you should be able to the uh, like I said the internet should be um, done by DHCP, so you should be good to go uh, with. Networking, if as long as you plug in, you know, plug a network cable in, you have a DHCP server set up on your router or whatever. Um, it should pull the IP address, and you should be good to go. Um, and that should probably that'll be good enough for this video. I think we'll stop here. So, um, like, comment, share, send this video around. I got more to come. We'll probably be doing setting static IPs so we can SSH to it, as well as probably doing some VNC server stuff. Which, if you don't know what VNC server is, Stay tuned. It's some pretty cool stuff. It's a way of logging into uh, the Raspberry Pi like this into the GUI mode, but not having to have a separate keyboard like I have right now or a separate monitor like I have. Um, you can log into it from your computer. It's like remote desktop if you if you know what that is. And if you don't, well then stay tuned. You'll have to see. Um, that's going to be coming up in our videos too. And then we'll probably start doing some programming with Python. We'll play around with that programming language and see what we can make with this thing. So as always, guys, keep coding, have fun with what you do, and if you want to, if you like what you see here, if you're new to this, um, so why don't you stop by my site, um, it's uh, just youtube.com slash misperry, and check out, uh, check out some more videos I have, I've got more videos on um, pick microcontrollers and other things, which if you don't know what those are, well, come on by and check it out. Also, make sure, and if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, I sure appreciate it, like, share. Um, like and share these videos that would be great um, really appreciate it any comments that you guys have questions or anything be sure to put them below all right guys I think that's enough time for today so with that I think it ought to do it we'll see you later guys